Good afternoon, my name is Miss Claudia and welcome to Crafternoon. Today we're going to be making marble paintings and scratch art. So for our first painting what we're going to be needing are marbles, acrylic paints and any colors that you choose, a cereal box that we're going to cut one side of, scissors, a piece of paper or canvas, whichever one you prefer, a glass of water. Um, we're not going to use it to. We're not going to use it in the painting, but we're going to use it to either clean our hands or to clean the marbles and paper towels, so that we can try to keep um, our work area as clean as possible. And remember that for the marbles, you can use any amount of marbles that you want. You can use one, two, three, or four, as many marbles as you want, or, no, or maybe just one. Okay, so let's get started. Um, here you can see that I've taken the cereal box and I've cut one side of it. to allow us space to be able to roll around the marble in without it falling out and we're going to place our piece of paper inside. This is the paper that I had available. We have one that covers all the edges. That's great. But if not, this is fine too. And here are our marbles. my jar of water and remember paper towels or newspapers whatever you want just as long as you keep your area clean so we're going to be grabbing our paint in a place that we can reach them And it's just regular acrylic paint, nothing special about it. We're gonna get started. Okay, so we have our paper, we have our box. The way that I'm gonna be distributing paint today is I'm just gonna directly take the paint and put it on the paper as opposed to dipping in the marble. So, and then we're gonna take our marble and put it over the paint and then we're just gonna let it roll. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, I've taken uh, this dark blue first and I'm just trying to make the marble go through the paint that I've deposited onto the paper. You might find that you need to put it directly over the areas that you um, put on your paper. And I'm just gonna see where this goes. I think I'm gonna start switching out this marble for another one and I'm gonna use a new color. So, don't forget to shake your paint. It's been a while that you haven't used it. And I'm just gonna drip it over the areas that still don't have as much paint, put my marble in there, and just start rolling. So this type of painting is um, considered abstract. Um, you'll notice that there aren't any specific lines. I'm not trying to make any specific shape. It's more about having fun with the shapes that appear from your painting and the colors that you're using. Uh, not really about the accurate portrayal of, of a particular subject. So basically, it's just about having fun. So as long as you're having fun, that's great. And now we're gonna switch to a new color. We're gonna use this dark green, some yellow, 
and I'm really starting to have fun with it now. So I'm gonna use two marbles. And you'll notice that the more paint that you put on your paper or your canvas, it's gonna get a little harder to maneuver or control the direction in which your marbles are moving because they're, they, they're gonna get stuck. But, you know, you just shake it up and you keep on rolling until you're happy with what you're seeing. Okay, so I'm just taking a look at what we have so far, and I like it, but I think that I'm going to use a little bit more paint to cover some of the areas that still don't have as much paint on them, the white areas. So I have this blue that's a little lighter than the first one that we used, and it's very vibrant. So you'll notice what I what I mentioned earlier that since we have so much paint already on our piece of paper um, we're just gonna have to work a little harder to shake the box around carefully and distribute our paint everywhere our marbles are having a little bit of a hard time moving around but we are not gonna give up we're gonna keep shaking and moving them along And this is the final result. I'm happy with this. I think it's very expressive. I had a lot of fun doing it and I hope that you guys have fun making this painting too. So we're gonna be moving on to our next painting and our second painting is scratch art. Uh, so we're gonna need a paper plate, um, crayons or oil pastels. Um, I'm gonna be using oil pastels because I don't have crayons today, but you guys can use crayons if that's all you have. Um, black acrylic paint or tempera paint, whichever one you have. Uh, one paintbrush and toothpicks or mini skewers, just something small and that you can use to scratch. And this one is optional, a juice bottle lid or any um, round object that you can trace. And with all the supplies listed here, we're just gonna get started now. We have our paper plate. I have a piece of cardboard because I like to avoid messes and when we're dealing with paint or messy materials. Um, I just like to use a piece of cardboard. We have our oil pastels. These are actually very cheap. I found them on Amazon. Black acrylic paint. Remember if you don't have black acrylic paint, tempera paint is just as good. And a paintbrush. And remember, I was talking about toothpicks or mini skewers. I do not have any of those today, but uh, I have a little screwdriver that is meant for eyeglasses. It's not too sharp, but it's sharp enough to scratch paint. So I'm just going to be using that, but you guys get toothpicks and mini skewers. And we're going to get started. We're going to take our paper plate and get our oil pastels or our crayons. And I am going to start with red. I'm going to start from the center. And the idea is to cover this whole plate with colors and you can make any pattern that you want. I'm just going to start with a circle with red 
and I'm gonna gradually go through the colors of the rainbow, more or less. We're gonna move on with orange. By the way, if you mix red and yellow, you get orange, just so you know. Okay, I'm going to use this light green. It looks like a very um, bright lime green. a darker green that I'm gonna go around with. That's why I said this is gonna be more or less like a rainbow. And you don't have to make a circle. Remember that be as creative as you want. You can make patterns with the colors that you use on your plate. So now I'm gonna use blue. After this I'm gonna be grabbing a darker blue. and I'm gonna grab the, uh, the purple one. And another fun fact, if you take some red and some blue, you get some purple. Okay, so I've covered all of the center, um, and I like it, but the outer edge of the plate, I'm going to be covering in other colors. And again, this is um, all up to you and what you want to do. I think I'm going to try to come up with a pattern of colors. So if I do one on this side, I'm going to try to match it on the opposite side. Um, I'm going to switch colors and I'm going to get a color that complements purple, which is blue. And you don't have to cover every inch of the paper plate. If you notice, I'm just messily painting this over. And I'm just making up my own pattern. As you can see, I've done blue on both sides of the purple that I have on the edge, and I'm just going to do that all around the plate. all these cool tones like blue and this shade of purple so I want to use a warmer tone like yellow to create a contrast 
with the blue. And here's a pop quiz. What color do you get when you mix yellow and blue? Do you guys know? When you mix yellow and blue, you get green. Okay, so I like this pattern that I've come up with today. And I think for this last little space of white that we have, on the edge, I'm going to use some red. So like I said earlier, you don't have to cover every inch of the paper plate with color. As you can see, some of my edges um, are still kind of white, but the areas that matter are covered, and you're gonna use black acrylic paint. For our next step, so the next step, we are gonna take our black acrylic paint. If you haven't used it in a while, don't forget to shake it up. And I have my cardboard here, where I'm going to place my paint on. And I'm not going to deposit too much right now, just a little bit, because uh, we're going to see how much we need. Okay, so we have our brush. It should be dry. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the black paint and we are going to apply it in a thin layer. That'll make it easier to scratch off. If you um, paint and there's too much paint accumulated in one area, you might, uh, it won't be impossible to, to do the scratch art. It'll just take you a little longer to do it. And uh, we're just gonna apply a thin coat of black paint over the whole paper plate. And the reason that we're using a dry brush as opposed to a brush dipped in water is because we need the paint to go on evenly and not be uh, diluted by water. So if we want an opaque um, coat of paint, uh, we just want it to cover it completely without being able to see through to the bottom of the plate where all our beautiful colors have been put. Okay, so I've covered the center of the paper plate. Now I'm going to move on to the edge. Uh, for those of you working at home, you can place this down on whatever surface you have that's covered with paper. I mean, um, with newspapers or paper towels or a piece of cardboard. I'm holding it up right now so you guys can see how I'm doing it. So I'm just holding the edge of it and painting over the edges. And acrylic paint tends to dry fairly quickly. So I'm not too worried about getting paint on my hands or holding it by the edges that are wet. Notice that with the color black, it really, a little bit really does tend to go a long way. I'm just going to use a little bit more to get these final spots. And voila! We are done covering the paper plate with black acrylic paint. So after this, uh, we're just gonna wait for it to dry. So like I mentioned at the beginning of this section, um, black 
acrylic paint tends to dry fairly quickly so I'm I've already waited you can see that the surface looks dry and matte so I'm gonna take my tool and I'm gonna start scratching but um, first I want to show you guys this juice bottle lid um, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna trace around it or use it as something to help me create a shape on to our paper and scratch so I don't have to scratch too hard the paint comes off with a little bit of effort and see we have a circle so I am gonna use this circle to make a ladybug so you make a circle make a semicircle for the head, two swirlies for her antennas, and I'm gonna make little semicircles for the spots on her back. And I'm gonna give her some legs. So I don't have a theme for this. Um, I'm just thinking about spring. I'm thinking about butterflies. I'm gonna make a butterfly here. Look, I've made a three and I'm gonna make one on the opposite side. I'm gonna make a shape that sort of looks like an exclamation mark and some shapes in the middle of the wings and we have our butterfly with her antennas. And I know we used um, the little bottle cap to make this ladybug um, but I'm gonna make a flower and I think I'm just gonna make a circle without that because I want it to be a little smaller and I'm just gonna make a swirl on the inside and this part is fun I'm gonna make the petals and then as I'm making the petals I'm just gonna turn the plate just giving you an idea of you know things that you can draw or scratch draw on your paper plate and you can start seeing the colors that we put on the underneath all the paint so we did all of our petals and I'm just filling in the spaces that look a little a little thin to me and here we have a leaf And I like how it's looking. I think um, the outer circle of this plate needs some decoration too. And then I'm not doing anything complicated. I'm just pretending that I'm making more petals all around the circle. And this is also really fun to do. And remember, if you start getting buildup on your toothpick um, from the paint that you're scratching off, uh, remember to clear that up. You can either blow on it or just shake it off. And we're almost gone around the whole plate and uh, we're done with that. So I'm, I'm liking this. I really like how it looks. I think it looks really cute. We might add a couple more details later, but generally this is how it looks and I'm happy with the results. But you guys can be as creative as you want to be, remember. This is going to be your work of art. Then I'm making a little heart for this space that looks a little empty. empty. scratching so 
in my eyes this is basically done. What I'm doing is just adding smaller details. And remember you can always look on, uh, online for references to drawing if you don't really know where to go. guys had a lot of fun today making these paintings with me. I certainly had a lot of fun and I hope that you guys come back next time. So remember stay safe and goodbye!